Neil Patrick Harris is no stranger to criticism by fans on social media. Following his iconic and legendary role in How I Met Your Mother, which ended in 2014, the actor was criticized for the show's long-awaited yet underwhelming series finale. Harris is once again under fire in 2022, but for something far worse. A 2011 photo he posted has resurfaced, and everyone's pissed about it. So let's dive into what the fuss is all about. First up, why is the internet riled up about this? Amy Winehouse died of alcohol poisoning on July 23rd, 2011, for those who don't know. She was 27 years old at the time, having won many Grammys for her album Back to Black. She struggled with drug and alcohol addiction for many years, and the media had mocked her. While most people were mourning her passing, the How I Met Your Mother star and his husband decided to make light of it with a surprising buffet plate at their Halloween party the year she passed away. An image of the platter hit the internet at the time after Jesse Tyler Ferguson's now husband, Justin Makita, snapped a photo for Twitter. The picture depicted a Winehouse lookalike who appeared bloody and twisted. The resurfaced photo pissed off fans, who expressed their displeasure on Twitter. Users on a Reddit sub discussed Harris's unpleasant demeanor. In the graphic image, a mold of Winehouse's likeness can be seen, without an eye, her tongue hanging out of her mouth, and her face decomposing. That's pure evil. Additionally, if guests didn't know it was the musician, a handwritten note made clear it was the corpse of Amy Winehouse. Harris and husband David Burtka, who hosted the party together, never addressed the controversy that followed after Harris shared the picture in 2011. Are we sure we can enjoy a serious series of unfortunate events on Netflix ever again? Another person pointed out that it was alarming to label the platter after the musician, considering it would have been just as gory to serve up any unnamed body, saying, they could have just had a gross meat platter for Halloween. It didn't need to have the Amy sticker on it. Tasteless, even in 2011. A dark time in our treatment of celebrities with addiction slash mental health issues for sure. So, is it cake? The horrific photograph shows a decaying and bloodied body, complete with Amy's renowned beehive hairdo and a couple of her tattoos, even though it's made of food. The dish was labeled the corpse of Amy Winehouse, in case someone didn't realize it was supposed to be an actual individual. Horrifying is an understatement. Turns out the lifelike dish was mistaken for a cake by many. It was made of beef ribs, pulled pig and chicken sausage in a spicy barbecue sauce. Ah yes, gourmet cuisine. Outraged viewers flocked to Reddit to blast the actor for this awful dish after the photo appeared online earlier this month. And now, a superficial apology? Neil Patrick Harris and husband David Burtka, who hosted the party together, never addressed addressed the controversy that followed after the picture was shared. However, Harris had no other option other than to publicly speak up after the image resurfaced online recently. The How I Met Your Mother star said in the statement, a photo recently resurfaced from a Halloween-themed party my husband and I hosted 11 years ago. It was regrettable then, and it remains regrettable now. Amy Winehouse was a once-in-a-generation talent, and I'm sorry for any hurt this image caused. Seriously, Neil? Seriously? Is that how you apologize to the family and loved ones of one of the greatest voices in the history of singers? Come on, man. Step it up. It's honestly hard to figure out how anyone could have found that funny. Here's some more on Amy Winehouse. After rocketing to prominence in 2003 with her debut album Frank, Winehouse died at the age of 27 after battling from addiction and alcoholism for the majority of her adult life. Winehouse's life has been the subject of several films, the most recent of which, Asif Kapadia's Amy, was highly criticized by Winehouse's father, Mitch. Mitch Winehouse publicly criticized the documentary's portrayal of him, calling it misleading. He also requested that the film be re-edited before it was released in order for it to depict him in a more favorable light. That's what we all want, right? A portrayal of oneself in a more favorable light. The British star also won five Grammys at the 2008 show, which she couldn't attend because she was rejected for a U.S. work visa. Last year, the BBC produced a documentary to mark the 10-year anniversary of the singer's death, which included her family. The show featured interviews with Winehouse's parents and some of her closest friends. People are disappointed in Neil right now, and he's going to have to step it up and take ownership if he wants to win us over again. Here's some other news you might have missed out on, starting with Neil Patrick Harris tipped to play the villain for Doctor Who. Hollywood's Neil Patrick Harris is tipped to play retro villain The Toymaker when he guest stars in Doctor Who next year for the show's 60th anniversary. Wow, 60 years is a long time for us to figure out who the Doctor is. Showrunner Russell T. Davies has revealed that Harris's eerie character will be the greatest enemy the Doctor has ever faced, and speculation is rife that he will morph into the warped shop owner who appeared in the third run of the classic series back in 1966, played by Michael Goff, the same actor who later became Bruce Wayne's butler Alfred in the Batman films. And yes, we know he played Alfred for three different Batman actors, but we remember him by Batnipples, a.k.a. George Clooney. The character, also known as the Celestial Toymaker, was a mysterious being from outside of space and time who liked to play games. Is it just us, or does the Toymaker sound a lot like an ex-girlfriend? Adding more to the speculation for Neil's casting, a shop with the name Mr. Emporium has been spotted 
spotted on location in Bristol, complete with a sign which claims the proprietor is the toy maker of the year. The shop appears to sell magical items, games, and tricks. That's some intense world building for the show right there. Next, the Seven's latest movie takes a dig at the MCU and DCEU. From Homelander being a dig to Superman, to the deep being their universe's Aquaman, the boys has been riddled with callbacks and homages to the superheroes and films that helped inspire the comics and television series since its first season. Even still, the series had yet to pay tribute to two of the most popular film universes of the moment, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DC Extended Universe. That all changed with the in-universe film Dawn of the Seven, which cleverly incorporated scenes from both franchises into its own feature. Homelander faced Stormfront in Dawn of the Seven when she stated that he couldn't stop her alone. Not long after, Starlight and Queen Maeve arrived, the Superwoman saying, he's not alone. Soon after, Black Noir and A-Train emerged to provide support. The scene was similar to the sequence in Avengers Infinity War as Okoye and Black Widow backed up Scarlet Witch in Wakanda as she faced Proxima Midnight. It's almost as if the show's creators were mocking the MCU films. Oh, right, they were. Later during the premiere, the press spoke with filmmaker Adam Burke, who explained the little Stormfront problem they have going on in the new series The Boys, a character who's based on a super controversial figure who's just a little bit racist. Well, quite a lot. The issue prompted Vought to consider scrapping the film or releasing it on their streaming service. We found out that fans who campaigned for hashtag release the Burke cut ultimately won out, and the film got a theatrical release. At least they got a theatrical release, making it eligible for Academy nominations, which Zack Snyder won't achieve. And finally, Netflix announces real-life Squid Games. The groundbreaking news of the reality competition comes after Netflix's announcement that Squid Game is officially renewed for a second season. The reveal came with a new teaser trailer featuring the surviving characters and new additions to the cast. Wait, even though 001 died, we'll still see more of the Squid Games? Count us in. In addition to the new season, Netflix will host a reality competition based on Huang Dong-hyuk's phenomenally successful survival drama, which swept the world last year. Squid Game The Challenge will feature numerous games based on the series, with 456 people competing for a record-breaking prize pool of $4.56 million. This is the highest cash prize in television history, with the most incredible reality show ensemble ever assembled. Fans of the drama series will be treated to a fascinating and unpredictable journey as our 456 real-life contestants compete in the most extensive competition series, full of tension and turn and culminating in the largest cash prize ever. Wait, do we have to go knee-deep in debt to be part of the competition? If yes, then it's cool because we're already there. Kidding. But seriously, we're looking forward to this one. That's a wrap for this video. What did you think of Neil Patrick Harris's statement about the picture? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.